looking forward to really trying to beat the hell out of these tires and really moving some dirt. I've been around and been in the seat a bunch of times and kind of know what the operators go through. Oh yeah, finally slipped out and I'm uh, 35% great right now. It's going to be interesting to see how the testing and development on these tires go. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Definitely beats sitting in the office all day, but uh, perks of the job, you know what I mean? Behind me, Justin is starting her test on her Baco tires. I feel like having some fun. I feel like we're having some fun. Yesterday we did the road testing really for looking at heat and overheating to see if there's any issues with the rubber compound. Didn't really see anything that we were concerned about. I think max temp was like 150. This is like heavy wet sand. Uh, we're in rock quarry and there's uh, some heavier rock that we're gonna work on later. But we basically want to put hours on the tires that are fully loaded. Try and pick up as heavy a bucket of material as we can. So this is, like I said, wet sand, and then we'll go find some rock later that's a little bit bigger aggregate. You know, we're looking for compression on the tires. We're looking for uh, material clean out with the tread pattern. All those things are kind of getting evaluated as well as like horsepower on the machine, you know, like are the tires sucking horsepower or something like that. A good hard use test or as hard as we can just to put a lot of hours in the tire. So we'll probably be here for quite a while doing this. Let's see what happens, right? All right, so we are in the quarry right now. It's the gravel quarry. Basically what we're doing is we're doing uh, traction, compression, and wear testing. So basically all we're doing is we're coming into a gravel pile here, trying to move some dirt around, trying to make the tires spin, make the tires work. We're looking for compression. We're looking for absorption, traction, but also wear. We don't want any chunking in the tires and uh, we don't want too much slippage. Initial thoughts on the tires themselves. The rears are performing extremely well, getting lots of good traction. There is some compression there when we need it. The fronts, the fronts are compressing well, uh, so that's good for shock absorption, but also traction in some certain situations. The one thing we are finding with this version of our tread design is that the tread might be a little too tightly spaced. So in looser or wetter, sand slash gravel conditions it seems like the front tires is kind of having a tendency to pack with dirt and it's not cleaning out as well as we had hoped so i think we're probably going to have to do another uh, rendition of our front uh, tire tread design guys are going to be operating in all kinds of conditions right it's not just straight up dry and all sunshine and rainbows there's going to be some pretty nasty conditions that guys are operating in and they're going to want to make sure the tire cleans out has good traction Obviously, they don't want to be left stuck in the mud. So I think that is one change that we're going to have to make is uh, opening up the tread face a little bit so that the tires clean out a lot better to gain more traction. When you're coming into a pile and trying to load up on the tire, it's not just sitting there and, you know, spinning down and digging itself into a hole. Pretty happy with them for the most part. Not too jarring on the body. Um, yeah, I think for the most part, the, the design itself is, is working fairly well. The goal here is like to do a three-point turn as often as possible so that we crank the tires 100% one way so that we're turning loaded and then obviously dump a pile, make a pile. So as we're dumping and making that pile, after it gets to a certain size, it's like, okay, we'll grab that pile and put it back. We're not trying to effectively move dirt. We're trying to effectively test the tires. Slower speeds, you're not really noticing any difference between that and a pneumatic tire. Like, it's really the highway speed where you maybe start to notice, you know, slight differences, but even then, it's nothing that's gonna 
make an operator not want to operate these tires? I mean, once you're in the quarry here and you're only going in first gear, working or operating, I can't personally tell a difference. It's definitely not bouncing you're out of a seat, that's for sure. The airless cores that we have, or the, the cores in the tires, they're, uh, they're absorbing all the shock when we go through any quick low spots or anything like that, so it's not bouncing or anything like that. It seems to just absorb it and roll through it. Anything in the tobacco goes into railway, asphalt, any sort of quarry work. If you got a backhoe in it and you don't want a flat tire, it's going to be a good option for anybody. I'm just black baiting and uh, cleaning stuff up for the uh, gentleman who was so kind to let us use uh, his quarry to get this uh, testing done. I want to make sure everything's nice and clean and tidied up and doesn't look like a mess when you're done. talking about. Alright, so we've been out here moving dirt, repeating our traction test from the last time. This is the new tread pattern that we developed for the backhoe. It's really hard to get the perfect combination of traction, material clean out, as well as heat dissipation and vibration so that you're able to like drive on concrete and stuff like that without it rattling. A lot of times you can easily get traction but then you don't get ride quality. You know, other times you get ride quality, but you don't have traction, or you have heat buildup issues, or it doesn't clean out material. So we're basically just doing this test, picking up a bucket, put as much load as possible on those front tires, and then basically back out, make a three-point turn so that we've got that twist and that torque on the tire. Every cycle, you've got two three-point turns, one loaded, one unloaded, and a dumping and a going into a pile of digging. Like that's in first gear in a backhoe and I've got a maximum bucket and I'm giving her into the pile and it's just not slipping. So that's a, that's a performing tire. That's what we wanted. The big difference is on the front where before we had issues with like packing up. This new version is just biting, you know, like it's not, it's not really slipping at all. I'm able to go into the pile in four wheel drive, get full buckets. Keeping the tire engaged and not having it slip is just really good for not only traction and machine performance, but tire wear, you know. We also soften the compound, which is gonna help with all of those things really. You know, just the more compression you get, the more material clean out you can get. Oh yeah, finally slipped out and I'm 35% uh, great right now. I know that somebody watching this video is an operator and they're gonna give me shit because I'm not using the, the little lever on the, on the joystick to do my shifting forward and back. I grew up on a farm and we didn't have that kind of fancy technology growing up. I'm trying to push the button. It's not faster. Okay, I gotta go back to my own way. We moved about a tandem truckload of dirt, no slippage at all. She just went in and she dug. happy that our team was able to get this design to this point. This isn't our first rodeo, you know, this tread pattern is a culmination of R&D that we've been doing over 
course of years, you know. Every project you learn something and you end up taking it into the next one and just continually get better and better as you do more of it, right? Way better. Like, way better.